All right, welcome to the show. I guess I'll introduce us this time. I'm Donovan Smith, and welcome to Current Affairs Taiwan. I'm Donovan, and this is Michael Turton. Ladies and gentlemen, hello. Happy to be back. All right, we've got uh, we've had a heck of a week. Uh, lots going on right now as we're recording. The Hong Kong rallies are going on. Uh, both in Hong Kong, I saw a press reports saying over a million people. Um, <clears throat> organizers are saying in Taipei there's ten thousand. Um, so uh, they're all dressed in black t-shirts and uh, cheers to them. Stay safe guys. Don't drink and drive in a Hong Kong rally. All right, shall we get kicked off? We shall. This week we saw the DPP primary with Tsai triumphing over Lai. What were the numbers again? Uh, 35 point six versus twenty seven point something. It was an eight point two percent uh win by Tsai over Lai. Decisive. <clears throat> yes. I wrote a, a piece in the, the news lens, you can look it up, uh, which I included a quote by this fascinating political analyst about the role of Hong Kong. What did he say? <laughs> <laughs> I believe the quote was, <laughs> I believe the quote was, um, uh, this is obviously the wise political analyst, <laughs> um, I, I believe it was, uh, imagine, uh, imagine the pollsters call and Hong Kong is on the TV in the background, something to that effect. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> there was a Apple Daily poll going into the uh, into the beginning of the week. Now, keep in mind the DPP primary was a public opinion poll, which matched up both Lai Qingde, William Lai, and uh, Tsai Ing-wen up against the two, what they considered the two presumptive opposition candidates, meaning uh, Taipei Mayor Independent uh, Ke Pi and uh, Han Guoyu, as the, which they picked as their, as their KMT uh, candidate to compare the, the, them with. <clears throat> so the final results came in. 15,000 respondents, half cell phone, half uh, landline, five different polling companies. So this is an exhaustive survey. Um, and it came up with uh, an 8.2 percent lead for Tsai Ing-wen. However, there was that Apple Daily poll uh, taken in the weekend before all the troubles erupted in Hong Kong just before the primary uh, occurred here uh, in Taiwan, and it had Tsai ahead by 2.4%, which was well within the, the margin of error of 3.5%. Right. So they were neck and neck going into the week, uh, and she pulled out an 8.2% win. What do you think? Well, I think Nathan Bado, Frozen Garlic, Frozen Garlic, fantastic blog. Bado has an exhaustive analysis, and he points out that the DPP poll was very likely skewed towards DPPers who were more DPP supporters to, who were to more degree, enthusiastic yeah. about supporting the the DPP than the general population would be. So it's important, I think, to take that poll with a grain of salt. Well, it's, he, it's not that reflective of events I, I, of the poll, of the I, public's point of view. I, I kind of disagree with that a little bit. Um, in that, of the fifteen thousand respondents, half were cell phones, and that's because anybody. You know, people don't mobilize for a cell phone. Right. You, either it's on you or it's not. Right. <clears throat> so the only way that this would have impacted it is on the landline side. And I don't know how many people were going, okay, let's all go sit by our landlines all day <laughs> for three to four days. <laughs> you know, I, I, I could see it impacting it by a percentage point. I, I don't see it being a huge swing. Well, I mean, maybe it's two. I, I mean, obviously Nathan Bado is a serious professional, so I, you know, I, but I don't see it being a, I, I don't see it being like five or ten percentage points. Is where I'm going with this. It's, it's okay. Um, and so it may have added a couple of percentage points to the pan green side, verse or taken a point or two away from pan blues or from K P, but I don't see it as being massively skewing it. Right. Some very interesting numbers in there. Uh, <clears throat> one of the things, if you look at the tables of numbers, um, Tsai does very well with the young. Han Goyu's biggest 
uh, block is the 50 to 59 age group. <gasps> Who knew? <laughs> <laughs> when, when Tsai Ing-wen is in the race, uh, voters, the young voters shift from the mayor of Taipei, Ko Wenja, back to Tsai. Yeah. If Lai had been in the race, those young people all shifted to Ko to Ko P. In huge numbers. Yeah. It was staggering. Yes. <clears throat> um, in the against uh, uh, with it was with Lai Ching as the DPP candidate among twenty to twenty nine year olds. I believe he got fifty four percent, something like that. Yeah. Um, Ke Pi did, and the gap between Lai and Tsai, Tsai beat um, Lai by 24 percentage points, if memory serves, in the 20 to 29 year olds, and by 14, if my memory is ballpark, ballpark. We can right? check. <laughs> 13, 14 percent, strong double digits, uh, Tsai had a lead amongst 30 to 39 year olds. Both. Yeah. Both, yeah. So, basically everybody under 40 went for Tsai over Lai significantly. Uh, she beat everybody in basically every category except Han Guoyu beat her by 0.4% in the 50 to 59 year olds. And remember, we always say it every week, Tsai has not yet begun the campaign. Han Guoyu is already out there campaigning. So it's important to keep in mind, these numbers are without a DPP campaign. So we'll definitely see them improve as, uh, as Tsai begins her campaign. So there was some lot of crap running around the internet this week, which probably has filtered down to you somehow. But there are some uh, very nasty stories going around that Tsai Ing-wen, Tsai Ing-wen's PhD thesis has disappeared, and that it, even worse, that it was ghostwritten by Joseph Wu. The first of the the second claim is nonsense. I'm not even going to talk about it. The first claim is more interesting because actually, if you search for it, you can't find it. You might think that's a huge conspiracy thing, but it was written in the early 1980s. It's a paper document, and it's not. There's nothing abnormal about a PhD thesis from a previous era, the era before digital things, not being available. It's perfectly normal, and very difficult to find. And Mark Harrison is a well-known uh, Taiwan-engaged academic uh, based, at the, uh, based at a university in Tasmania. Pointed out that he actually cited that thesis in his uh, own thesis. So it exists. And this is bullshit. But you will hear it. So squash it as soon as you hear it. However, you can find mine chose thesis. <laughs> which, is, which is actually a typical thesis of that era. It's, it's written on paper and it's studded yeah. with tiny little errors. Yes. Which is normal. And it's, it's about tiny little islands. It's too. about tiny little islands. Yes. Actually, Lin Jiaolong's got some traction too. Um, really? Yeah. Wow. He wrote about the uh, democracy movements. Anyway. You know what Han Guoyu's thesis was about? Did they tell me? It was something to do with economics and England. United Front activities. Yeah, that's right. United Front. United activities. Front activities in Taiwan. It's like uh, James Bond writing about spying. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. A few things I'd like to add just briefly on the DPP primary. Um, something that I, I included in the article, which I think is really quite important, is that because they were going into this neck and neck, um, <clears throat> and there was a lot of bad blood. But the good news for the DPP is that neither camp went too nasty. There was a lot of venting of frustration on both sides um, because the Thai camp was essentially gaming the rules to buy time. Uh, and then on the other side, uh, the Lai camp basically sprung the candidacy kind of out of the blue without giving any advance notice and leaving Thai totally unprepared. Um, <clears throat> so both sides were, were pretty upset at the other over this, and also Lai had said that he was not going to challenge Yeah, Tsai. exactly. So, and Tsai would not have brought him out of Tainan if she ever thought he would challenge her. Right, yeah. exactly. So, that was so a, it was a betrayal. There was, there was a lot of feeling of frustration and betrayal on both sides, uh, to a certain degree legitimate on both sides. Um, but. Uh, neither side went full negative against the other, and that I think is going to help. The other thing is that the win was pretty decisive. Uh, excuse me, by um, by Tsai, and I think that will go a long way 
toward quelling any more rebellions to the end of the year, or at least in this in the on the presidential level. On the so. legislative uh, level, they're going to have <laughs> breakouts of trouble. We know this every election, but they they have it every election. Yeah. <laughs> so where so lies and lie also went out of his way. Uh, he knew he was defeated. He knew there was no, and so he was quite gracious. I thought yeah. in his um, Nathan Beto. Nathan his, Beto pointed out that he had signaled the the green fundamentalist who hates Ty because she's not pro independence enough. They they say he signaled them, shut up, guys, fall in, support our party candidate, mm -hmm. and hopefully they will. Yeah. Well, the the insurrection is. I mean, yeah. I mean, that's essentially what I led the article with. Yeah. Is that the his forces were vanquished by a, a large enough margin that um yeah the, the that insurrection on the presidential level is pretty much over there's going to be you know the taiwan society still whining but <laughs> generally that that's over and it's been pretty much put put to rest if it had been close this could have turned really ugly it could have been DPP. brutal we dodged a bullet yeah so, so, okay, it's time for, for KMT Primary! All right! <laughs> Woohoo! Yeah! All right! We are ready to go with the KMT <laughs> Primary today! All right, because it is an exciting primary. Now the DPP is done. It was kind of boring compared it was. to the KMT. We just life. got that out of the way so we can talk about the KMT, which is yes. what we really love. <laughs> and we're prepared to talk about it today. Yes. <laughs> All right. Do you want to read off the KMT website? Oh, well, hey, let's do off it. That? So, the, so UDN, that's the former United Daily News, the former KMT Party newspaper, reported, uh, wrote an editorial, sorry, which the KMT Party organ posted to its own medium site, media site saying, the KMT's internal report based on iSocial statistics from January 1st to June 3rd found that, blah, 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 Han Goyer's popularity on the internet was gradually declining. <laughs> <laughs> While Foxconn chairman Terry Guo, that's Guo Taiming, still failed to make an effective breakthrough in popularity. <laughs> this is the KMT's own news organ, folks. Guess what? There's no clear candidate out there for the KMT. Yahoo! <laughs> we are ready for this primary season. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I think we should get some white bandages for all the bloodletting that's going to happen. <laughs> Definitely. <Yeah. laughs> all right. So, um, there is just so much going on in the KMT primary. Okay, so... Uh, Wang Jinping dropped out, and then, however, I like I sent you some links. You saw this. Uh, he clarified not long before he dropped out, like just a week, a little over a week before he dropped out, that he was in it to the end, that he was definitely in the race to the end. Then he drops out of the KMT primary, saying he didn't want to participate in the. How did he put it? The, the weird games, I think he was calling it, uh, of the KMT primary. And so he, he, but the first question a reporter, he finishes his announcement. The first thing a reporter asks him is, so will you drop out and run as an independent? And he said, still early. <laughs> so what does he do next? He goes and holds a rally. A rally? A rally. A campaign rally where their people are cheering uh, <coughs> Wang Jinping, Dong Suan, meaning uh, get elected. They're cheering on his presidential run, even though he's dropped out of the KMT primary, and that he's still a KMT legislator and still a KMT party heavyweight, and he's still holding a campaign rally. And this was the founding rally, founding, i.e., just kicking off <laughs> for the friends of Wang Jinping, Fernando County, held in, you'll never guess where. Cao Tuan? That's right, Wu Duanyi's hometown. <laughs> Tiny little town, <laughs> whose only significance is that it's the birthplace of one of his major rivals. That's right, and Nathan Bauer used to live there. Oh, did he? He did. Wow. Yeah. Poor guy. I know. No wonder his hair's white. <clears throat> 
So, um, and so anyway, now on the other hand, there's a lot of chatter going around that the factions, which have been traditionally Wang Jinping's power base, and they tend to be very loyal to him, that there's a lot of talk that now that he's not in the primary and it doesn't look like he has a big chance of winning, that they are swinging their support behind Han Guoyu. I've been seeing this from multiple ones. There's a nice translation on Reddit if you want to take a look at that. But uh, there are some other reports coming out long before that one, um, here, particularly here in the Taichung press, uh, talking about the local factions, Yan Qing Biao and these guys, um, supporting uh, Han Guoyu. So this is, so what Wang Jinping is up to, uh, how this is going to play out, where, what the factions are going to do, I think we're going to need all of that popcorn and more. Several bags. We're going to need several, several bags. bags of that. Yeah. Note that Wang is the Wang created Han. It was Wang's yep. factions that helped Han Guoyu get elected in Kaohsiung. Yep. So if they switch away from Wang to Han, that's also a note that Wang just fired a shot at Wu Duanyi. Mm -hmm. So I think we were talking last time about how Wang might be aiming, assuming the KMT loses, and ties decisive victory in the primary, I think, is going to raise her stock among voters. It makes her look like a more a sure bet for the presidential win. Mm -hmm. um, Wang might actually be playing to get the chairmanship when Udoni has to step down yep. after losing the election. That's something That's we've what, been both yeah, talking about. <laughs> yes. the, of course, Udoni might still step in and run. Mm -hmm. Watch for that. Don't count him out. Yeah. So, um, yeah. <laughs> 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 so keep in mind, essentially Wang Jinping has, he, he's already been the Speaker of the House, the President of the Legislative Yuan. So um, there have been two positions that he has openly coveted, which he has never gotten. One is he ran in 2005, if memory serves. 2005. Uh, against uh, Ma Ying-jeou Ying for the party chair, chair position, and he lost. Ma was supported by the rank and file. Yes. And Wang was supported by the party elders. Way back in the day, in the 70s, when the KMT used to have retreats and it would bring promising young people to these retreats to prepare them ideologically for being heavyweights in the KMT, Wang was in with a group of, I think it was in the group of James Sung and Lian Zhen. Yeah, they were all, they were all in the same group at the same time. And so Wang has very deep connections to people at the top mm -hmm. of the KMT. So when he ran against Ma, he was supported by the elites. And the rank and file like Ma. Mm -hmm. And Udoni is Ma's, faithfully served Ma during his final uh, days. Yeah. Holding the party together. So. And of course, President's the other one. Now, of course, here's, here's one of the ironies is, of course, there's all this w w word going on right now, and this has been going on for a while, is that it's Terry, Terry Go or Guo Taiming. <laughs> Is the one who it mind Joe's backing. I need popcorn. Tell me more. Tell me more. So this is where a lot of the speculation is going. Is that right now? Is now Wu Duanyi is now backing Han Guoyu. The spec. Now we already know that that's open out right. there. He's flat out said this. But Wu Duanyi was the one who brought Go into the race last year. <laughs> <laughs> and now everyone's saying that that Terry. Terry Go is Ma Ying Zhou's proxy, and for his crew, even though Wu Duanyi is, of course, Ma Ying Zhou's protege. Now, meanwhile, Wu Duanyi is backing Han Guoyu because he was making a play to push out Wang Jinping and to split his support base and the support base from the factions. We need a flowchart for this. I think we do. <laughs> we do. <laughs> Oh, and Terry Guo. And a Ouija board. Terry Guo this week was full of complaints. Let's see. Uh -huh. First, he was complaining about the KMT's uh, information leaking from party headquarters by yep. him. Yeah, that was one thing. Mm -hmm. What else was he convincing about? Well, okay, so that that uh, was part and parcel of the fact that he was the one, he's the one KMT primary candidate. Of course, Wang Jinping didn't sign it because he dropped out. But apparently, Go Timing is the one KMT candidate who has refused to sign a document saying that he will that that he will he will refuse to or he will definitely not run as an independent should he lose in the primary. What do you think, Reindeer? Is he going to run as an independent? 
If he loses to Han. <laughs> He's got the Seriously? money. Seriously? Oh, that's true. He does have the money. He's got the money. And he stepped down as Foxconn head, right? It's, He's got the money and he's got the time. Wow. So he's got the money, he's got the time, he's refused to say that he won't run and refused to sign off on it. Every single one of Terry Goh's recommendations to the KMT, because he's already dictating terms to them, <laughs> that, <clears throat> he dictated, I don't know, was it seven or nine or something, yeah. um, uh, recommendations to the KMT at their last big meeting, and they agreed to exactly... Zero. Zero! Yes! So, and then he started getting all upset about, and this... <laughs> <laughs> Get off my lawn! Yes! <laughs> and so he starts complaining about, get this, do you want to... <laughs> it's no, no, you, you go ahead, you tell him, it's yours. <laughs> <clears throat> He's been complaining about the pro-China press <laughs> and how much they favor Hangul <laughs> because of all their corporate interests in China. Oh, you because see. of their corporate interests in China. Yes. There's a man who owns an enormous <clears throat> multinational business in China. Right. Uh, <laughs> He's probably kicking himself that he didn't buy a newspaper 10 years ago. Yes, I'm sure he is. Yeah. Um, I probably thought, you know, Tsai would back him, but, you know, maybe not. You mean Robert Tsai, <coughs> the head of Wang Wang Group? Yeah. 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 Um, so. <laughs> That's so great. Yeah. Uh, anyway. <clears throat> now, uh, obviously, Tsai got boosted by uh, the tragedy, you know, the tragic events, the 50-some-odd people injured in, in Hong, uh, Kong. Hong Kong. Um Saw a lot of interesting comments from KMT people this week about yeah. Hong Kong. Yeah. Han Goyu's comment? Uh, what is it? He would, one country, two systems can only come to Taiwan over my dead body. Yeah. I thought that was pretty striking. Yes. And what did Go Timing say? He said, uh, base, not quite as, as, as colorful, but basically, no way. Yeah. You know, I, he put it in less, right, right. less exciting terms. <clears throat> but Tsai, I think, has come out looking very presidential. She's always seen a boost in her um, in her polls, poll numbers when she takes a firm and clear stance for Taiwan sovereignty against uh, Chinese Communist Party aggression, either in Hong Kong or against Taiwan. She's always uh, <clears throat> gotten a boost in the polls, and this is one area where she seems to be consistently. Uh, she's pretty much right in the mainstream, I think, of public opinion. Right. Um, oh, the KMT primary. Speaking of which. Yes. Speaking of public opinion, <laughs> what is the KMT primary poll going to be based on? Landmines. Landmines. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the interesting thing about that is they're all going to be, be old people, right? <laughs> yes. And all these old people. The thing is, here's, here's Han Goyer and... No, those are landfills. Those are landfills, sorry. Yes. Uh, Han, Han Goyer and Go Hamin are both mainlanders. Yes. And Wang Jinping and uh, Wu Doni are both Taiwanese. Yep. And those old deep blues are going to be picking who is going to be running. They're going to be voting according to who has the purest ROC ideology. That's going to be an interesting choice. Because also Eric vote. Chu. Oh, Eric Chu is still Chu in the race. is still in the race. But he's only half million. And his numbers have been picking up. And I, what I think is going on, they've been slowly but steadily picking up. So you think he's just going to hang back and hope? That Han is going to crest. Han's already crested. That's what I think. Yeah, I think he's crested, but he's not. He's plunging. not going to fall. No, he's, he's not plunging. No, no. no. Um, and a lot of people keep thinking that he's just going to plunge. But I keep bringing this up. A lot of people have invested themselves in, in him. Han. Yeah. They've told other friends. They've done. You know. And I want to actually go to the rally here in Taichung next week. I want to see the crowd. Oh, we'll have to go. Yeah. Is it a Sunday? Saturday. Saturday. Oh, yeah. Next. We got to shoot some footage for the show. Yeah, <laughs> standing there, um, and um, so you know, I want to see this. But I mean, Terry, the interesting thing is, is I mean, Han Guoyu's definitely got that demographic. He's he's got that forty-five, sixty-five demo. Yeah, locked down. Yep, he owns it, um, and that is a demo that votes. And that's where this DPP primary, these numbers, they were so exhaustive and so big, and they showed. 
uh, Han with 22-25%, depending on uh, which candidate um, you but stack what up happens against. what happens if Koenja doesn't run? Now that Ty's in the race, Koenja probably will not run. If he does, he's really dumb. So where do those votes go? What did uh, Eric do get in the last election? 31%. 31%. And Sung got how much? 12.8. We just had to look this up. <laughs> we're, we're faking this. So 12.8. Uh, so that's about 43%. 43, yeah. The total blue vote in the last election was 43%. 43, 44, yeah. Does anyone out there see Han topping that total? I'm not seeing it. I'm not going to I'm not seeing it either. I, I think he's got, and that's in a straight up and down two-way race. Right. Um, I think that's about as high as he can go. Um, in a three-way race, I don't know. And I thought it was very interesting that both against Lai and against Tsai, he was low to mid-20s. He's not... I, but I do think that the number should be higher than that. Um, yeah. this, this was a little bit weighted toward Greens. It was also a particularly strong week because of the situation in Hong Kong for Tsai. Right. I also think that... Um, um, that uh, he'll get some more sort of generic KMT votes or maybe pick up some of the undecideds. And if Kopi doesn't run, he'll pick up some, some people there. But this polling was not a strong showing. Um, Tsai easily beat both Ke and Han. I mean, it was in double digits. Yeah. And this is striking. And this is something I noted in the article was, is that months three months ago, she was down by... 10 plus, 20 plus points against against both of them. Well, the problem was that Han... Han was at 54, Han 50 talks. Percent. Han talks. <laughs> 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 yes. Ty doesn't say anything. Yes. <laughs> Han talks. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, well, it, the interesting thing is he talks, but he doesn't say much. But when he does try and say much... He's always got to backtrack. He's got to back it. He's got to Mr. Walk Clarification, back. always waffling. Gonna, gonna have more syrup with those waffles. If he's running the election, and he's, if he's running in the election, he's doing this, he's gonna sink himself. Slowly. Yeah. He won't sink himself, sorry. He's gonna slowly erode. Yeah. He's gonna slowly erode. Drip, 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 drip. Oh, we should bring back the 18% pensions next day. Oh, no, 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 we can't do that. I, let me clarify this remark. Right. That's gonna be his election campaign. So, I think in the end, it's going to be very difficult for him to do better than uh, Eric Zhu plus James Sung. Combined, yeah. Combined, yeah. Um, and if there's a third candidate, especially if it's Guo Taiming or Wang Qingping. Or a fourth candidate. See, this is the really interesting thing. Oh, yeah, that's true. If there's a fourth is, candidate. Is, I mean, this is where we really don't know what's going to happen. I mean, right now, I and I've been saying for a while, I think that Tsai is the most likely one to win at the end of the day. Right. She, she beat her first, she, she's overcome her first challenge in defeating William Lai. So she's off to a good start there. But a lot can happen between now and election day. But she's got a couple of huge advantages. One is that a national election as opposed to the 2018 local elections. National sovereignty issues are, are a big deal. Um, <laughs> uh, national sovereignty issues are a big deal. Um, and she's a safe pair of hands with opinions that are pretty much right in the center. It's mainstream? Mainstream. All of her opinions are mainstream. Whereas Han, Go are out of the mainstream. Ke Pi is mainstream Taipei, but not mainstream Taiwan. Nope. Um, and Wang Jinping is who knows. Wang Jinping is jello. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> He's probably more where money is to be made, just yeah. a guess, who knows. Um, and, uh, you know, so, and the other thing is, and, and a lot of people, kind of, I think, may underestimate this, but the fact of the matter is, is that she's had the experience now of two presidential campaigns, one, a losing one in 2012, and a winning one, one yeah. in 2016. Right. She's been vetted to death. I mean, if the the most dramatic thing they can come up with is some paperwork got lost, a thesis got lost from 30, the early 80s. It's, it's probably sitting in a, in a... It has to dwar, be. You know, in a All it means is they somewhere. don't know where it is. They That's just don't know where it is. Yes, yeah. exactly. Um, so, so, you know, it's going to be... And who knows what can, what's going to come up on, on Han 
Han Goyu. I mean, More already is out lots. There. Daniel oh, Han's right. got a lot on him already. Yeah. Terry Goh's got a lot on him already. Um, uh, there was another thing that came out this week, too, a poll showing that the residents of Taiwan now value sovereignty over economics. Yep. Which, uh, that, was, that was always yeah. a false choice, but now this poll shows that it's actually irrelevant. This whole debate about, oh, we can get rich by moving closer to China, which was always nonsense. So that, will, well, that attitude, if it actually exists, will help tie a lot in the upcoming election. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> we are ready for the KMT implosion. <laughs> Give me that popcorn. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, folks, for chugging into today's show. And uh, see you next week with... Uh, Probably three bags like this. <laughs>